Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Gatza. And I'm Brian Collins. And we're here at Kennedy Space Center at the launch site for STS-134, final flight of the Space Shuttle Endeavor. That's right. Today's stuff episode is about STEM education. STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And, and those are the core subjects that are going to take education in the United States into the next generation. That's right. So strap yourself in, come along with us, and join us for this episode of Stuff. Hey everyone, I am here at the Educator Resource Center at Kennedy Space Center and we are here with Lanny Rosengren. Lanny is a educational specialist with the uh, Resource Center. We've asked her to come out and tell you guys a little bit about what kinds of resources and information are available to teachers and educators. Great. Well, everything we do here is free, first of all, and when educators, teachers come in, they get a whole bunch of good stuff right here. So, for example, we have an educator guide which includes lesson plans, activities that they can bring back to the classroom. We also have a brochure where they can get more information about us. Resources, how to find resources online. And pictures, lithographs, all this good stuff right here. Um, we also provide teacher workshops where they can earn credits. And it can be any topic related to NASA, whether it be robotics, if they want to learn a little bit more about robotics, aeronautics, rocketry. And we do everything is hands on and then they can also bring that back to their classroom. And the teachers can actually use these workshops for fulfilling their continuing education points as well, correct? That's correct. Yeah. So if their school allows those credits, right. they, can, they can do that as well. well. That's awesome. And so what about for teachers who may not necessarily be able to come out to the Space Center here? What kind of resources or opportunities do you have for them? Sure, absolutely. Sometimes that happens and we have a group, they're called AESP, and they travel. They travel out to the schools. They do professional development for teachers. They also do workshops for students. And they can go to Florida area schools, Georgia, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands. Wow. And all that, again, it's completely free. Right? Everything no is free. Wow. Terrific. Great. Well, there you have it. Some wonderful, great resources for educators and teachers. Um, if they want to get some more information on any of this, where do they go? They can actually just go to the website, www.nasa.gov, and there's an educator link right there. It says, for educators, they click on that and they can find us. Well, terrific, awesome. Well, I think that gives you guys some really good resources. For me, I've got to get back out to the launch pad, so uh, I'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm here talking to astronaut Clayton Anderson. Clayton, can you tell us a little bit about your flight experience with NASA? Sure. Uh, I flew for the first time on STS 117 in June of 2007 to the International Space Station where I lived for 152 days until I came home with STS 120 on Discovery. And then in 2010, about a year ago, I was on the STS 131 crew that also went into space with Discovery. Uh, pretty indescribable experience, huh? Absolutely. It's. Yeah. You just can't. I mean, it's. It's so fantastic, it's so nerve-wracking, it's stressful, it's fun, it's relaxing, it's all everything rolled into one. Always wanted to be an astronaut? Since I was eight years old, that's yeah, right. Me too, didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I got very lucky. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of the kids out there who are watching this probably want to uh, go that path. So, so let me ask you a little bit about that. So many of the kids who are like in high school today, well, we're, we're talking a lot about like STEM education. And so many kids today, they're sitting in their math classes of like geometry or algebra, and they can't really relate how that's going to, you know, fit into their future careers. So mm -hmm. take us back to like when you were that age, studying those like basic math and science courses, and how you're relating that to what you do today as an astronaut. Well, you know, when I studied it in school for the first time, um, it didn't really take root to me until I did a summer internship. And when I had the ability to go to companies and actually do work, uh, and test things and see how that math functions in society and, and in the real world, that's kind of when the light went off that said, oh, now I get it. And so um, I've been very lucky to be in a job my entire life where I've seen how all that stuff gets put together and does great things like launch rockets into space. Well, I want to focus in a little bit more uh, on the STEM stuff here. Okay. Because that's, 
that's really, I think, what a lot of the, the kids who are watching this are going to be interested in. When, when, when you're um, trying to, to um, work through like a complex problem, say up in the space station or, or you know, on board in the shuttle or something like that, how, how important is it to kind of be able to reach back and pull out those skills and use them on a daily basis? Well, you know, we have a lot of help on the ground control team and I don't know how much of the skills I pulled out of my head, but the basic knowledge and concepts are what are important. You know, force equals mass times acceleration or pressure is equals volume times temperature. You know, those are the kind of things you keep those big picture items in your in your head and you say, well, the pressure's rising, does that mean the volume's decreasing or the temperature's increasing? So basic uh, equations and basic thought processes that kids learn in high school and college and junior college are the things that you use when you become an operational person as an astronaut in the space station, right? The, the computers do all of the high-tech calculations these days, but you have to understand the general principles so that you know uh, how to change something or how to suggest something be, is changed if things are going wrong. So if you have your pressure is too high in your spacesuit, how can you fix that by dropping that pressure down? Great. Thanks so much. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You bet. Good luck. Thank you. Hi, everyone. We're again out at the Educator Resource Center, this time with Joshua Santora, who's an education specialist. Tell us what that's all about. Well, that's kind of a cool way to say that I get to really have a hands-on experience with working with students and educating students in STEM fields relating to NASA. So if a student was really interested in learning more about NASA or their class was more interested in learning about aerospace, robotics, that sort of thing, you would be a resource for them. That's right. Yeah, they come out here and we actually do programs with them all the time where we get to do hands-on activities and talk about living in space and all kinds of different things. And they get to see things like this up close. It's really cool. Is this a rocket engine? Yeah, that's basically the idea. You get to see some cool parts and pieces of it to really experience what it looks like in more of a practical term than like this high and mighty, it's a rocket. Mm -hmm. So this would be like a, like a class sessions that they might do, or tours, or? Absolutely, both of those really. You've got the classroom sessions that take place, where I mean, anything from 45 minutes to a day's worth of activities you can do. And again, it can be anything. It can be catered to state standards, what teachers want, what they're looking for, what students are interested in. We really aim to please and aim to fulfill a void for that teacher and really just augment that teacher's teaching and instruction so those students are getting a great experience here and definitely including things like tours too to get to see some of the neat facilities out here. That's great. Now what happens if they can't make it here out to Kennedy Space Center? What, what do you guys have for that? Yeah, well we love to be able to offer even, I know that times are hard and um, things can be expensive, so we have the digital world where right behind us actually there's the Digital Learning Network Studio here at Kennedy Space Center and our specialist in there actually communicates with students all across the country every day. And so he's connecting live via video conference or Skype, depending upon what kind of technology you have, and he's interacting with them. It's not just a lecture, it's very interactive and again, it's, it's a hands-on kind of a thing where he's bringing that NASA STEM content right to their classroom. So this could be things like experiments that may, you know, space STEM related experiments. Mm -hmm. Interviews with certain people, maybe? Absolutely. We bring in specialists, we bring in astronauts, we bring in, actually our center director comes out every month or so and interacts with students, and demonstrations with liquid nitrogen, and... That's always fun. Always fun. <laughs> so, lots of different really neat things that excite students for STEM curriculum. That's great. Now, if someone's really interested in, in the STEM career, maybe, you know, what's after high school or college, um, there's, I imagine, lots of opportunities for maybe like an internship or something like that. Can you speak a little bit about that, maybe your personal experience? Yeah, absolutely. For me personally, I actually began as an intern out here. I met someone who was out here and they kind of connected me with this internship. Although there's lots of opportunities, there's about 80 to 100 students every summer and 20 to 30 every fall and spring that come out here and actually get to do hands-on work. It's not just the boring stuff or paperwork or a desk job kind of a thing. They get to really see and do really very real world things and get that experience and that exposure very young. And we have the co-op program, which is kind of an, an extended internship where they're expected to return for a number of years, once or twice a year, to do a couple months at a time. And you, again, you're getting that very hands-on experience, working alongside some astronaut, or I'm sorry, some engineers and, and scientists that have been around for 20, 30 years even. Wow. So I imagine that's mostly, I guess, at the college, university level. Is that right? 
For those programs, yes. However, we do love to offer those kind of things for high school students as well. We have a specific program called NASA Inspire, which is a program for high school students that's designed to be a pipeline where they start in ninth grade, although you can jump in at any point, and you work your way through this online community, being involved in discussion boards and competitions and all kinds of things, and earning points along the way. And students who are involved and actually who go through the process of applying can actually come to a NASA center, there's 10 all across the country, and they can have an experience during the summer. And that can range everything from a single day out here to an eight week paid internship. Wow, so it's not just a, a resource if you're interested in tech, it can also you know, lead into an internship and some, some more in-depth experience if that's what the student's really interested in. Absolutely, because again, even you're getting a high school student who's getting that hands-on experience. Real-world experience as a high school is invaluable. It'll lead very easily to internships and a career of confidence in knowing this is what they really want to do. That's great. That's great. So if someone's really interested in knowing more about these internships, these education programs, where should they, what should they do? Where should they go? Uh, the best place to go is nasa.gov. And actually up at the top, there's two different buttons of great concern. There's a for educators and there's a for students. Perfect. So can't ask for anything more than that. All right. Thanks, Joshua. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for joining us for this special edition of Stuff. We hope you've got lots of great resources now that you can use this. Brian. No, the, wait, wait. The oh, launch. Wait, I was going to check this. Wait, they check out see this the app. Launch. Hang on, check out this app. Watch this. This is really cool. Zero and lift off for the final launch of Endeavor. Expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space.